todo lo han quedado del ranchito que era mío ay, 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 ay de aquella casita tan blanca y bonita lo triste que está si me presta I told you a thousand times I don't want to catch you running around my saloon anymore and steer clear of this place until you find enough cash to pay for your own whiskey Hi there, Moody. Aren't you going to buy me a drink? Of course I will. The drinks are on me, Brandy. Thanks, Moody. Get scared now. I've been told the boys have been around to see you this morning. And they threatened you. Is that right? Yep. But they're not going to get a plug nickel out of me. And what if something happens to you? Hmm. Don't see why anything should. I've been running this shop for nigh on 20 years now, and nothing's happened yet. <laughs> you seem to be pretty sure of yourself, don't you? If I were in your boots, I wouldn't... You say. I can take care of myself. They've been scaring folks into paying them protection money, but they won't get any of mine. Yes, you're right, but it's dangerous. If everybody would do what I'm doing, we could lick them. This sure is a beautiful rifle. Don't reckon I'll ever have enough cash to buy myself one of these. You like it? Got a new shipment of them just yesterday. The latest models. Do you want to see them? I sure do, if it's no trouble to you. No trouble at all. I haven't had the time to uncrate them. They're covered with packing grease. You'll see. There's nothing better this side of the Mississippi. They're the new repeating kind. Hopkins must be loco to keep that gunpowder lying around in this kind of weather. Oh, poor Mr. Hopkins.
Lord, how long will you permit the law-abiding citizens of this town to be murdered by a gang of outlaws? Were any of you folks here to see how it happened? There would have been nothing to see, Sheriff. It certainly looks like an accident to me. This was not an accident. What do you mean? I think it's a case of murder. Then I guess you better tell us who the murderer is. I still don't know. Well, it's your job to find him out, Sheriff, not ours. Where were you when all this was going on, Moody? I was having a little drink at the bar when I heard an explosion. You can ask Brandy. Brandy! Think you could take your mind off that booze long enough to answer some questions? Ask me as many questions as you want, Sheriff. How long you been drinking in here, Brandy? This is my third drink, but don't say anything, will you? I asked for one. Where were you, Brandy, when you heard the explosion? Here. And Moody? Where was Moody when it all happened? Right here with me. He's the one who asked me to have a drink with him. Are you convinced now, Sheriff Clammer? One of these days, I'll be catching up with you, Moody. And you're going to hang! Be careful, Sheriff. One false move with me and I'll shoot you so full of holes they won't find your tin badge. That's no way for you to talk to the sheriff, Moody. He's only doing his job. Tell him to keep his hands off me and stop looking for trouble. You'll have to forgive him, Sheriff. He's a bit of a hothead, you know, but way down deep, he isn't a bad fellow. Sure. He's just a good boy, am I right? Kind of strange coming back these parts. Look out, they don't fill you full of lead again. You don't have to worry about me, partner. Nothing's going to happen this time. I sure hope so. Oh! Thanks a lot. Miss Alice. Sorry I had to come all this way. Good morning, Steve. How was the trip? Fine. Well, then just stand there. Come on up. Do you want to go through town all the way to the ranch? I've got to hand over some documents to the sheriff, but that can wait till tomorrow morning. No, let's go to town right now. We'll save time that way. Get up. Get up. Steve, I've come ahead to meet you because I wanted to talk something over with you before you set foot in Tombstone. I've already written this to you in my letters, but I want to repeat it to you again. I don't want you taking revenge for what they did to you. Remember, Steve, you'll be working only for me now, and I'd like you to forget what once took place between you and Bo. No feuding. Agreed? Yes, ma'am. I agree to that. Yes, but you've got to remember one thing. There's been a lot of trouble in town in these past months, and you'll have to stand up to Bo and his gang in order to defend my interests. I want your promise that you won't feud with them, even if you're in the right. Is that clear? Yes, it is. Now, you come straight home when you finish that work, and try not to be too late. All right, Ma. This stuff can't be used anymore. That doesn't matter. Well, let's clear it away. Brandy, could you give us a hand? Mm. No, I don't want to. Besides, I can't bend over. <laughs> Who paid for your drinks today? Moody. You mean to tell me you let a skunk like that buy you whiskey? You just wait and see what happens when I get a bit. Here, carry some of these. Ha, 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 ha. 
<laughs> hey, darling. Hi, Randy. Welcome back. What on earth happened here? An earthquake? No, just a big explosion. I'd like to stop here a minute. All right. <laughs> I've got to buy some provisions. <laughs> oh, Let's Randy. have a drink together, <laughs> Donnelly. <laughs> uh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's sure been a long time, Donnelly. How have you been? What do you have to drink, Brandy? Oh, what's the matter? Have you forgotten? I always drink my neat. Two brandy. You never change, do you? I guess not. And you? Well, I don't either. Well, here's to you. Well, bottoms up. That's sure going to taste good. You're the last man in the world I expected to see here today. They say you still had two years to go to finish your Senate. How'd you get out so soon? You think I got out too soon? I'll bet you'll never guess who sprung him out of jail. Who was it? Alice McCormick. He's gonna be a right-hand man. Keep your shirt on. Wait till Bo tells us what we're supposed to do. Don't worry, I'm just gonna give him a warm welcome. Howdy there, Steve. Hello, Moody. I'm sure glad to see you back in Tombstone again. Can I buy you a drink to help celebrate your release? They let me out on parole. Well, it's all the same thing. Give us a bottle of the best and three glasses. I'm not drinking anything. Give us that bottle. Hear that? He doesn't want to drink with me. No. Well, we'd like to, but there isn't time. Why not? Is there someone outside waiting for you? If it's a woman, let her wait. Even if she does happen to own the biggest homestead in the valley. Am I right? Those funeral duds sure do suit you, Moody. Be seeing you around. Uh, I'll see you later. Howdy, Sheriff. Steve Donnelly. Sit down. This sure is a surprise. I'll need your moniker on this, Sheriff. So they let you out on parole, huh? Who was it put up the bail for you? It was Miss McCormick. <laughs> she's a right smart woman, and she's made a good decision, Steve. She'll be needing a good man like you at her place. The outlaws have burnt her crops and rustled her cattle, and she hasn't been able to stop them. With you, she'll be a lot safer now. I don't aim to get mixed up with them. That don't matter. They'll see to that. Did you hear what happened in town today? Poor old Hopkins. Steve, I got a notion that one of these days, they're gonna blow up this jail and me along with it. Here, that should do it. Much obliged, Sheriff. Good to see you again, Steve. Come on by for a drink sometime. Excuse me. Are there any left? Not many. Make sure you get everything now. Okay. So long, so long. And welcome back. Thanks, Sheriff. <laughs> Mighty fine collection. I put in a lot of work getting these organized. These hombres you see over here on the right are all still on the run. And these are out of circulation. Circulation? When one of these outlaws is plugged or set up for a spell, I'll put the poster here. Huh? Who's this one? He was a good man at heart, in spite of everything. He was too trusting. Why, this is Reverend Andrews. The Cattle Ranchers Association of the Santa Cruz Valley will pay $1,000 reward to the person who offers information leading to his capture, dead or alive. Let me have that. You're too young now, boy. Someday, when you've grown up a bit, I'll show you the whole collection. for that, but if you want me to.
Okay. It's all there. Kathy, you come out there. I just can't keep that young and clean. Anything wrong, Kathy? No, Pa. Good boy. Get the harness ready, son. Come on, boy, move back. Thank you. Oh, boy. Here comes that man, Cirillo, again, Pa. I kind of thought he'd be coming back. a ranch like this one. So these heads are cattle. They're new crops. What do you want here? I'm here's a friend, Mr. Patrick, to tell you that you and your family sure don't need protection. Protection? Why do you think we need that? Well, a man can never tell what's going to happen from one day to the next. Why, a fire can break out just like that, or some of your cattle can get sick and die. But you know I haven't come to see you on my own, Mr. Patrick. You go tell your boss I'm not paying. I don't need his protection. We've got a sheriff, and the law's going to be our protection. I'll fight you outlaws with the bare hands if I have to. You'll be sorry for this, Patrick. Get moving. Pronto! Move on! Good morning, Miss Alice. Good morning, Donnelly. I'm right happy for you, Miss Alice. I'm sure Steve is going to be just the man you've been needing out at your place. I think he is. Well, Steve, I hope you'll drop in and see me next time you're in town. I probably will. We can have a couple of drinks together and chew the fat for a while, if you like. Yeah. We got some old accounts to settle. Steve is going to have a lot of things to keep him busy. He won't have the time to be going into town very much. <laughs> How'd it go? Murray was okay. He paid off. But that old man, Patrick, he needs a lesson. He almost filled me full of lead. Thinks he's tough, eh? Yeah, he called us a bunch of outlaws. He said he had the sheriff and the law to protect him, and that he'd fight us with his bare hands. Buenos días. Buenas tardes, querrás decir. Llevas durmiendo casi 24 horas. ¿Lo has dejado todo en orden? Claro, muchas gracias. Y para que a ninguno de Oh, must be something new. The best way to convince you folks is to let you see with your own eyes. Is that the new safe you were expecting? That's the one. Uncover it. Do you see that? Made in Chicago, 1875. Folks, this is the best safe in the territory of Arizona. Did I say Arizona? I should have said in the whole United States. It's absolutely safe from burglars. I wouldn't want any of you people to rob my bank. Listen to him talk. And I can assure you right now that any gold or greenbacks you leave with me will be safer here than in any other place. Can you guarantee what you say, Eustace? Absolutely. Wait a minute, I want to show you something. The first cash I'm going to put in this safe will be mine. Let's have a big celebration. The drinks will be on me. Be careful, I'm Let's go, boys. Let's go. 
You're invited too, Sheriff. There's something I especially want you to hear. No. Thanks anyway. I've got work to do. All right then. That's really telling them, Sheriff. You could sure peddle your own wares. I don't think a banker ought to be out peddling his wares at all. That's it isn't right. dignified. But, Bo, I'm so Don't call me Bo. My name is David. Well, I'm sorry, David. I'm positive that nothing at all is going to happen. It would take someone at least 90 days and nights to try to work the 99,999 possible combinations that new safe of mine has got. But someone could hit on it by pure luck. No, that's impossible. All right, then, Underhill. Have it your way. And don't forget our meeting on Sunday. We've got very important matters to discuss. Here's mud in your eye. Come on, fill it up again. The bank doesn't pay for a drinking every day. Hey, where they been keeping you, honey? Hey, don't I get another drink? I'll have another one. Another little drink. <laughs> Have another round on me, friends and customers. Now listen. I want to show all you good folks how my new safe is going to protect your money. Tonight, I'm going to leave the doors of my bank wide open. If any one of you is able to take out the $2,000 I've just put in the safe, the money is yours. The safe that's just been delivered can be opened with a secret combination of five numbers. You can all try. You mean that, Mr. Underhill? Yes, indeed. You're all welcome to come and try your luck. Hold on. Are you really on the level with us? Of course I'm on the level, and all the money will go to the man who's able to take it out of my safe. Uh, Mr. Underhill. Huh? What the? Who's there? You'd better get up, Mr. Underhill. What the devil for? Mr. Bo has opened the safe and taken out all of the money. Ah, that's impossible. Come and see. He probably knew the combination. For your sake, I hope this is not a practical joke. It's the truth. for yourself. The money's all here. Much obliged. Are you loco? Give me that. <laughs> I may be loco, but hand over that money. Now, you wouldn't shoot that pistol at me, would you, Brandy? You're wrong, banker. <laughs> you know this is armed robbery. Do you really expect to get away with this, Brandy? Quiet. Change this bill. Change it, I said. <sighs> You're going to regret this. I want to make you a proposition. I'm not going to give any of the money back. No, it wasn't that. The money's yours. And I want you to have another 200. For what? If you don't talk about what has happened. 200 more? Uh, no, thanks. I just want $2,000, and I don't see why I have to hide it. What do you want, then? Say, 
One of those cheroots you're always smoking. I'll pay for it now. You'd better go back to bed before you catch cold. <laughs> you don't think I'm going to let you get away with this? Wait a minute. <laughs> we haven't even had breakfast. Chuck, sure, that don't matter. Our fiddles can wait. <laughs> sure. Arrest that man. He robbed me. Underhill, you can't back out now. You promised that. I know perfectly well the promise I made. You arrest him. No, because he didn't steal anything, according to me. You promised to give that $2,000 to anybody who could take it out of the safe. It's Brandy's. But he forced me to open that safe. Brandy? He had a six-shooter trained on me. Is that true? The truth is... I took the money from the safe, and he tried to take it back from me. Can't go back on your word, Underhill. I'm sorry, Eustace. You don't have any proof. There's nothing Let's go. I'll kill you, you drunken fool. You take your hands off him. I'll do just as I please. No, not this time. Anybody who commits a crime in this town is going to be arrested, tried, and put in jail. I'll stake my life on it. You better make sure you stay alive, Sheriff. Are you threatening me? You know that threatening a peace officer is a criminal offense, and I could have you locked up for it. Everybody in this town has got a right to work here in peace. And I tell you, the law is going to protect their right to a decent life, as long as I'm the sheriff here. That fellow Underhill is a doll darn fool. I wonder what Bo will say when he hears about it. Let's go. Granny's bringing them all in here. Mr. Hammond, can I talk to you? Today's the last day I have to pay the taxes on the mine. Can't you pick a better time to talk about these things? Come on inside. Let's get to work. Oh. <laughs> better on you.
Hey. Morning to you. <laughs> What's the matter? Why are you crying? It's nothing. Nobody ever cries for nothing. Did your boyfriend leave you? I've never had a boyfriend. I reckon I never will. I don't see why. You're young and pretty. No. Mr. Hamlin is always telling me that if I were pretty, he'd give me a better job. Hamlin doesn't know what he's talking about. You shouldn't work for him. I only do it because I have to. Papa died last year and all he left me was a bit of land. But your land is worth something. Pa told me never to sell it. There's an old silver mine there. Maybe there's some silver left. <laughs> it sure is pretty this time of day. Do you like getting up early? Why, sure. To tell you the truth, I've never been up this early before. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Eva. Eva Delanois. My father was French. It's closed. We'll have to go around to the front. Say. You never did tell me why you were crying. Well, because I was supposed to pay the taxes on my land yesterday. And Mr. Hamlin didn't give me the money he owes me. I'm afraid of losing the land. And why didn't he give it to you? I don't know. He owes me about a hundred dollars. Hmm. Take this. Oh, no. I couldn't take your money. You settled with Hamlin. Then you can pay me back. Come on, take it. Uh, I... Uh, well, but it's a lot more. Well, with what's left, you can buy yourself a dress, shoes, whatever you want. Oh! Randy! <laughs> when are you getting hitched, amigo? <laughs> hey, come here. What are you doing here now? Oh, let me say hello to your girlfriend. No. Where are you going now? I'm going over to pay the taxes. I've got to get there before nine. But there's still plenty of time. You'll wake up the judge. Brandy. Listen, what is your real name? Robert. Robert? What's wrong with that? <laughs> Nothing. Robert, can I tell you something? Yes? I think you drink entirely too much. Why do you do it? Well... I drink. It's as simple as that. Are you trying to forget something? Yes, just like everyone else. Let's not talk about that. I'll bet you're thinking about something else. <laughs> <laughs> Wait here for me. <laughs> you said 99,999 combinations. <laughs> Go ahead and laugh as much as you want to. But I'm good still morning. convinced it was a good way to get publicity for the bank. You sure got plenty of that. I think we've had enough of that story, gentlemen. I'm sorry, Bo. And don't call me Bo.
And my friends, I'm of the opinion that our sheriff's gotten too big for his britches. That little talk of his yesterday about keeping law and order has got the town all hit up. Old Patrick, for example, not only refused to pay off, he had the gumption to threaten Cirillo. In our business, we're always going to find ourselves in trouble with the sheriff. That's true. But I want to tell you the sheriff will always be a mess of trouble for us until one of us has the guts to put him out of the way for good. Listen, we'd better not take too many risks. Remember what happened when we got rid of Lambert? Yes, but that time we acted like a bunch of foolish hotheads. You're right. We didn't have much experience then. Well, gentlemen, we've got to do something about it. I reckon you know that if we're going to force a showdown with the sheriff, the people will be against us. You're wrong, Lewitt, and I'm firmly convinced of what I say. If we don't show these homesteaders that we're the bosses here, they might decide to come down on us altogether. There's no other way out. It's either going to be us or them. Unless you think it's time we close down our operation altogether. Does our mayor wish to enlighten us with his ideas on the subject? Oh, I couldn't enlighten you. <laughs> You'll have to decide for yourselves. The folks will get used to paying us to protect them. If for no other reason than the fact that they will now really feel themselves protected. And will have both law and order. Isn't that what they're asking for? Well, here comes Stauffer. I can't wait to hear his reaction. You mean to say we've already decided? Why, certainly. Raise your hand if you're in agreement with me. Eustace, I reckon that after the brilliant contribution you've made to our discussion of the problem, you're not going to hold back from casting your vote. But I didn't say anything. You know you've committed a stupid and ridiculous blunder. But we've come to expect that of you. You have no right to talk to me that way. Raise your hand now, you imbecile. I'll ask you to excuse my being late, gentlemen, but the Reverend Andrews was a bit long-winded. Judge Stauffer. We've decided to take certain necessary steps against the sheriff. Certain steps. What? I'm much obliged, Miss Evans. Goodbye. Oh, the basket. Thanks again. Bye. All that fancy stuff isn't worth much. The important thing is to know how to beat them to the draw. Gotta crawl like this. Huh? Don't be scared, Eva. He's gonna be a sharpshooter. Gosh, look at her. Where's Brandy? In there. Go on. Wake him up. What are you aiming to do? This won't hurt him. No. What the? <laughs> I came here to pay you back the money you lent me. Here. And thanks very much. You're welcome. Do you like it? I put it on right away so I could show it to you. What you got in there? <laughs> Cookies and strawberry jam. I don't think Brandy gets enough to eat. Let me have a look in there, Eva. I'm supposed to sample all the grub our prisoners get. Mm-hmm. It sure looks scrumptious. Did you make it? Yes. Even the strawberry jam? The jam, too. I learned how in Dallas. Dallas? You've been to Texas? Yes, I lived there with my father. Have you ever been well, there? Well, sure I've been there. Well, why don't we try a little of it? I sure will. Get a chair for Miss Eva, son. Okay. I hope you like it. Don't worry about that. Here's your chair. Thanks.
Clymer, Sheriff Clymer, there's a drunk trying to wreck the saloon. Mr. Hamlin says to come right away. What's going on here? Where is he? If you're tired of living, Sheriff, there's no fault of mine. <laughs> Good thing you're quick on the draw, Moody. The sheriff came in here to gun you down. You can be dang sure of that. You both saw it. I had to shoot him in self-defense. We'll be your witnesses, Moody. Don't you worry about it. Oh, He's dead. you'd be keeping them company now. Town drunk. Here, have one on me. I came in here wanting to kill me, so I had to defend myself. There are plenty of witnesses. Why don't you arrest him, Judge Stauffer? I'm afraid I can't. All I can legally do is call for new elections. And I'm doing that as of now. I hope we can find the man we need. house your father built? Yes, he always wanted to live near the mine. Robert. Hmm? You know, I don't like your drinking so much. I know, but what else is there to do? Ooh. Did you ever think of getting a job? Not that I wouldn't try. I'm useless. I'm sorry, Robert. Here you are. Listen, Eva. I'm not able to offer you anything. I'm a, a drunk. A failure. No, don't talk like that, Robert. I'm all alone, just like you are. And I have nothing. But you have a silver mine. <laughs> I don't think you would find one bit of silver here. I guess you'll just have to take me as I am, without silver or gold. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
I'd sure like to know why in tarnation Stauffer had to rush to set up these new elections for sheriff. It appears to me he's only doing his job, carrying out the law. No, I don't think so. Did you hear what he said last night at the saloon? No, what did he say? That this town needs to find a sheriff with guts who can outdraw anyone. Well, he's right. Wouldn't you say so? Dick, es muy tarde. Tienes que venir a casa. Joan, yo sabía que iban a matarle. Es horrible. Ahora no comprendo cómo he podido callarlo. ¿Cuándo lo decidieron? Esta mañana. En el banco. Yo sé que si has colaborado con esa gente hasta ahora, ha sido en buena parte por mí. No he podido nunca arrancarte esa idea absurda de que he hecho de menos mi vida anterior. Pero quiero que sepas una cosa. Lo único que no estoy dispuesta a perder es todo cuanto de verdad cuenta para ti. Tu honor, tu felicidad, el ejercicio de tu profesión. La muerte de Klimer estaba decretada hace tiempo, y él mismo lo sabía. No hubieras podido impedirla. Pero sí puedes impedir en cambio, o debes intentarlo por todos los medios, que las cosas sigan así. Ya es bastante amargo vivir en un pueblo arruinado, para que además haya de ser sin libertad. ¿Qué puedo hacer? Luchar contra ellos. Explicar a la gente cuáles son sus propósitos. Cómo no necesitan ninguna protección ni tutela especial. Eso puede costarme la vida. Di. Di, yo sé que eso no lo dices pensando en ti. No, es verdad. Pues calla. Cállatelo entonces. The soul of a just man is in the hands of Almighty God, and he shall find eternal refuge there. His departure from this life may appear to be accidental, and unwise mortals may consider him dead. But the wise man knows that God will never allow the just to be destroyed. The final victory shall always be theirs. The pains inflicted upon them are a preparation for immortality, for the Lord has tested them and found them worthy. They shall pass as gold from the crucible fire to adorn the eternal throne. And when the great day comes, they shall illuminate the heavens with their brilliant light. They are fearless and allow no obstacle to impede their pathway. The Lord prefers the patience of the just to the brute strength of the men of evil. Stretch out your hand and protect us, O Lord. Strengthen the hearts of the just and show the love you have for those who walk in your ways. And destroy the men of evil. Amen. Pastor, esperábamos que dijese algo sobre Klimer. Y que puedo decir que no sepáis todos mejor que yo. Era un hombre justo. ¿Y de los que le asesinaron? ¿Tampoco quiere decir nada de ellos? El sheriff era un buen amigo suyo. Dios nos ha de juzgar a todos. Al justo y al injusto. Porque hay un tiempo para todo. ¿Y cree que a Bob y a toda esa gentuza hay que hablarles así? En otro tiempo no habría dicho eso. 
Aquellos tiempos pasaron, chico. Hoy no tengo atribuciones para hacer otra cosa. ¿Usted qué opina, señor juez? Yo no puedo ocultar a ustedes mis relaciones con los responsables de esta muerte. Pero precisamente por eso puedo hablarles con mejor conocimiento de causa. Sé cuáles son sus procedimientos. No se detienen ante ninguna barrera para conseguir sus fines. Sin embargo, no creáis que son tan fuertes como parecen. Además, son cobardes. No conseguirán dominar al pueblo si actuamos unidos y con decisión. Tiene razón. Lo importante es no ceder. Eso son solo palabras. El armero y Klimar no cedieron y ya pueden ustedes ver. Pero en cambio cedimos otros muchos. Cedimos todos los demás, mejor dicho. Eh, ¿Qué nos aconseja usted? Buscar entre nosotros al hombre que pueda ser sheriff. Elegirle y darle nuestro apoyo. Tan pronto tengamos un sheriff o un comisario, extenderé todas las órdenes de detención que se me pidan. ¿Quién es el comisario? No hay comisario. ¿Y no podemos nombrarle hoy mismo? Sí, yo puedo tomarle juramento. ¿Quiere alguien ser el comisario? Yo. Yo quiero ser el comisario. Trabajaba con Klimer, es justo, ¿no? No. Eres un niño aún. Por favor, déjeme. Supongo que no lo consentiréis. Lo legal es esperar a las elecciones. Y cuando haya un sheriff... Me parece que este pueblo tiene la suerte que se merece. Vamos, John. Yo voy. How many cards? Mm. Well... Evening, Clark. Good evening. Pull up a chair. How did the funeral go? Many people there? Judge Stauffer has betrayed us. What do you mean, betrayed us? He said he knows for sure who the murderers are and that as soon as the town gets a new sheriff elected, he'll have them all arrested. He even said some of the blame was his. And what else did that skunk have to say? That if the whole town got together, we wouldn't have to worry about them. You mean worry about us, don't you, Mayor? <laughs> of course I do, gentlemen. That's just exactly what I meant. How many cards do you want? You, what do you want here? You owe me $85. You gone crazy? What's going on, Hamlin? Nothing. It's just Eva. Now you get away from here. I'll break I you. want my money. Now get going. I'll think of a way. You can stop practicing now. It won't help you anymore. What are they doing, Eva? They're playing cards. Playing cards, huh? I reckon that's their way of mourning the dead. <laughs> pero, pero se puede saber qué estás haciendo, Eva. Hadn't you better be going home? Your mother's probably worrying about you. What are you aiming to do with that gun? You better leave it there. Want me to walk you home? No, thanks. You better be getting home yourself. It's very late. Good night. Good night. All we've got to do now is find the right man to elect sheriff. That's not going to be easy. We'll have to find somebody who can't handle a gun. Sometimes they turn out to be the most dangerous of all. That's a thing I've seen happen before. Hey, bring my horse here. Marty! Say, look, that's the boy who was helping the sheriff. You don't use your head, do you? But I didn't recognize him in the dark. 
What's all the shooting about? My God. Randy, he's the right man. He'll make the best sheriff the town of Tombstone ever had. andar con contemplaciones. Por eso os digo que hay que acabar con ellos. No podemos permitir que se atropelle a la ley y que se asesine a sus representantes. ¿Hasta dónde vamos a llegar si lo consentimos? Nadie habla de consentirlo. Aquí lo que se discute es si se va a utilizar un procedimiento legal. ¿Es así o no, señor juez? Exacto. La primera solución tiene la ventaja de que somos superiores en número. Pero a cambio hemos de estar dispuestos a luchar y a perder la vida. La perderemos el día menos pensado si voy los suyos se hacen con el pueblo. De todas formas, eligiendo a un sheriff, tendríamos que ayudarle después. No podemos cruzarnos de brazos como se ha hecho hasta ahora. ¿Pero quién se ha cruzado de brazos? Por otra parte, para eso existe el cargo y para eso se le paga. Vamos, digo yo. Pero nosotros le damos dinero. Y él paga con la vida, amigo. Eso es claro, bien, 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 bien. Vamos a ver si no nos alejamos del asunto. La acción directa, como decimos, tiene la ventaja del número. Eso es inadmisible. El juez no puede proponernos algo que sea ilegal. Yo no propongo nada, Martin. Estoy tratando de resumir el problema. Pero si quiere, baje y hágalo usted mismo. Yo me callo con mucho gusto. De todas formas, la ley obliga a que haya elecciones y tenemos que cumplirla. Muy bien. En ese caso, lo primero que hay que hacer es elegir un sheriff mañana. Él será entonces el encargado de detener a los culpables y, y yo les juzgaré. A no ser que eh, queráis retirarme del tribunal. Yo... yo no puedo oponerme a ello. No, no eso no. No, no, no. no, no, no. Nadie quiere que se marche. Bien, de acuerdo. Elegiremos a ese hombre. Pero tendremos que estar todos a su lado si queréis que su labor sea fructífera. A mí me gustaría, solamente como información, saber si no sería más cómodo, más prudente ceder en algo. Al fin y al cabo, con pagar la protección, no habría estos problemas. ¿No les parece? Se lo tiene merecido. Es un cobarde. Bien. We are assembled here to cast our ballots for the town's new sheriff. I think electing Brandy sheriff would be just a joke. What Tombstone needs is the sheriff would have the nerve to face up to Moody and his gang of outlaws. There's a man here who's really cut out for this job. He used to ride with those gunmen and he knows all their tricks. He even went to jail because of them and I don't reckon he's going to forget that. He can outdraw any man in town, and that includes Moody. I think Tombstone ought to elect Steve Donnelly. Let me go! Now, just a moment. Steve is on parole and can't accept an official job. Besides, he's working as head of my ranch. But we can easily arrange to get him an official reprieve. I don't think there'll be any need for that. Steve has got a good job at my ranch, and he wouldn't have the time to work for me and tend to his duties as sheriff. Why don't you let Steve talk for himself? Besides, most of the folks here feel that Tombstone is a lot more important than your ranch. It's impossible. Miss Alice would have to tear up my contract with her. She paid the bail. Have it your way, Miss McCormick, but you'll go down in our town annals as a selfish woman who turned her back on us. The town annals? For months and months, these outlaws have been burning my crops and rustling my cattle. And was anything done by you to stop it? All of you stood by and didn't do a thing. The sheriff, Judge Stauffer, Nothing. Don't you think you ought to include that in your town annals? All right, Miss McCormick. Are there any other nominations for the office of sheriff? No. No, I'm not about to nominate myself. But I think that we've been overlooking a very important point. No. As some of you folks probably know, I've had some experience in these matters. And I'm convinced that our whole town must stand together as one man behind the sheriff. We're not in church. Why don't you get right to the point? Someone here has said that by electing Brandy, we'd be playing a joke on the town. No. I don't think that's why they want him to be elected. I know they've got a much more practical purpose. I think that like a man, they could control without any difficulty. 
And so they decided on brandy, because they knew that with one bottle of whiskey, they'd have the sheriff in their hands. But if we can agree to unite and act as one, perhaps we can see this thing through. Brandy is not going to do anything for us, agreed. But who is going to help us if we don't help ourselves? Aren't we going to aid our own people? And then there's something else. By electing Brandy, we'll be saving the life of another sheriff. You've got local. Why? If the outlaws want to elect a weak sheriff so they can do as they please, why can't we follow the same strategy? If you say no to this, it means you won't sacrifice anything to make this town safe for your own children. But if we've come here for nothing but a lot of empty talk, then I'd better keep quiet. In any event, my vote will go to Robert Parker, known as Brandy. Reverend, you should be a candidate for public office. You're a very skilled orator, you know. Reverend Andrews is talking sense. I'm going to vote for Brandy, too. But I'm not forgetting that electing him sheriff won't mean a thing unless all of us in this town get together and fight these outlaws ourselves. Thank you a lot, fellas, but I'm no good as a sheriff. You're the only guy who had the guts to stand up to Moody. Sure. I was drunk then. Well, keep getting drunk and we'll finish them all off. You must try to understand, Steve. I didn't want them to elect your sheriff. None of those men has ever tried to help me. They've left me to defend myself alone against Moody and his gang. You know that. You're the only one who's been willing to help me, and I'm grateful. Well, Miss Alice, I've only been doing my job. Steve, you do realize, don't you, what a dangerous job the sheriff has in Tombstone. You would have been risking your life for them every day. Especially if they let Bo and his pack of murderers take over the place. Remember, Miss Alice, I'm a peaceful man, but I've got my pride. I was sent to prison because of those people, and I stayed in that place for three long years because no one would take the trouble to pay my bail. I reckon they didn't like the idea of having me around. But, Steve, that's an old story. Well, it may be an old story to you, but it's not to me. And I'll tell you something else, Miss Alice. One of these days, I'm going to settle my accounts with them. But you'll end up getting killed by them. I just know you will, Steve. I beg you. Stay with me here a while. Tiembla el pulso aún. Dame otro trago. Ten cuidado, no vayas a serenarte demasiado. Jack Palmer, here. James Hogarty. Here, okay. Bad shot. Mal, trae. Fíjate en mí. We will now count the ballots for the election of the sheriff of Tombstone, Arizona. Brandy. Brandy. You've been elected sheriff, Brandy. Go on, Brandy, let's go. Enhorabuena, Brandy. Congratulations, Brandy. Here's your badge. Hurrah for the uh, I, I just want to say that... Uh, I'll do the best job I can. And I'm starting right now. Uh, do you happen to have a warrant on you, Judge? Here you are. 
Congratulations, Brandy. Uh, thank you. I'm looking for you, Moody. I've got a warrant for your arrest. You don't waste any time, do you? All right. Come on and arrest me. Mind if I join in the game, Moody? Better keep out of this if you're smart. Sorry, but I'm in this all the way. Better think it over, Donnelly. I'm playing for keeps. So am I. Donnelly! Better not forget that you've just been released on parole. They can send you right back to jail for carrying that revolver. I don't give a hoot. This time I'll have company. Come on, Moody. You give up to the sheriff. Remember this. Cirillo, he rode off that way. Please, let me through. somewhere, Eustace? You cheap crook. Get in there. But I... 
Get inside. Oh, let me explain. Sit down. I said sit down. Bo, believe me, I wasn't taking any of your money. Yes, Eustace. You intended to send me a receipt for my money. You imbecile. Leave everything the way it is. They said at nine. They'll be here any minute. And now we'll find out whether anybody in this town has got any guts left. What do you think is going to happen? I'm really worried. Nothing. Nothing at all is going to happen. I know this town of ours and all the people in it. They're a bunch of lily-livered cowards, all of them. And Brandy? Now, you're not going to tell me you're afraid of Brandy, our newly elected drunken sheriff. So you really wanted to leave us, Eustace. It appears to me you're not happy here, is that correct? Do you know what I think I'll let you do? Pay your way out, and you'll enjoy the same protection we give all of our clients. You're teasing me, Bo. I told you never to call me that. David, they've shown up. Quite a sight, eh? They're Moody's best, and they're all killers. I assure you, Lord, I didn't like the idea of bringing them into town, but I was forced to do it. It was a necessity. <laughs> And nothing will happen to you. I can't. It's against the law. ¿A quién representas? Contesta. Supongo que no me obligarás a matar. Wait a minute. Brandy, don't try to be a hero. You won't be able to do it alone. And no one in town will raise a finger to help you. Make one move and you're a dead man. Get going. You men all know what you came here for. There's nothing to worry about. Hold it. Don't make another move. I said don't move. Get 
Oh! <laughs> 